Hello team and welcome to another ATP Geopolitics video with myself, Jonathan MSP, it's the Ukraine War Frontline update for the 22nd of July 2023. Before we go to the frontline, let's just drop into what Zelensky has said. He's reportedly said that the Ukrainian counteroffensive is about to quote, gain pace. We are approaching a moment when relevant actions can gain pace because we are already going through some mines locations and we are demining these areas. I think that's possibly quite generalised. I don't think there's going to be a significant change. I think the strategy is somewhat different to the envisaged it. RT Green, if you watch um, Andrew Perpetua's live stream last night, he refers back to uh, at the beginning of this month, RT Green, who's a commander, uh, was a commander in Kherson as well, says that the Zaporizhia southern front line is very much like Kherson, just times three, much bigger scale, where it's an attritional thing going on. So they are hammering uh, Russian equipment, they are hammering Russian positions, uh, and then eventually they'll take that ground. But you have to do that stuff first. Uh, Andrew Perpetua is also saying that, hey, he, there's so much footage of a lot of uh, Russian equipment lost. So the Russians have been losing a lot of equipment across the front lines, uh, a lot of tanks, a lot of infantry fighting vehicles. That is happening. And I think the Ukrainians are just sitting back and doing that whilst also having probing attacks and trying to take a few key locations. As for what's going up in the northeast, well, well, we'll go there first before returning to the Zaporizhia and Donetsk Blasts. Uh, this is the Kupiansk area, uh, comes down to Svatova, to Kremina, further down to the south. Uh, here we have uh, some mapping changes for Syriac maps. The red line is the really pro-Russian mapper Syriac maps. The blue line is a pro-Ukrainian mapper, Andrew Perpetua. And they both refer to the Russian defensive positions. So this is where the Russians have been pushed back to, and that's where they have solid control. The white line is deep state map, the pro-Ukrainian mapper. That's the Russian defensive line as of the beginning of the counteroffensive, so May the 30th. So you can see there have been some advances for the Russians in this area over the last six weeks. Syriac maps had them right up to there. And then yesterday, rejigged the map and said, oh, they must have retreated from sometime since June, and then has rejigged it further. Uh, so it's not really that the Ukrainians have, have pushed the Russians back. It's that he had his mapping wrong, uh, essentially. And that's how uh, that's how I read that. So anyway, there is uh, activity going on up in the area. Russian forces continued offensive operations in the Kupiansk area, reportedly advancing. Yesterday, the Russian Western Group Forces spokesperson claimed that Russian forces captured five Ukrainian strongholds, four observation points during fighting the Sinkivka railway station and Mazutivka. So that is, uh, let's get rid of that. That is uh, Sinkivka and Mazutivka up there. Mazutivka is just a couple of houses in, in the middle of a, a forest. Uh, Sinkivka is more... Uh, substantial a railway station. I don't know if that's the railway station you know, near Sinkivka, somewhere over here, or whether they're still talking about the railway station that they took, this one, uh, the, with the blue roof there, Manchavane, or something like that. Um, uh, butchered that. But uh, yeah, so there, as you can see, there's activity taking place in that area. Russian a mill blogger claimed that Russian forces advanced to unspecified positions at the Oskil River in the Kupiansk direction. And again, uh, so I've, I've missed out a bunch here because it's kind of just referring to what was mentioned yesterday, which is a, a claimed three kilometer. Uh, you know, gain of territory, which is basically this area that we talked about yesterday, and a move into Oskil River. Well, this is the river coming down uh, here, where Syria maps has them advanced up until, up until, but they all struggle to get across over the bluffs over the other side of the river. It makes that quite a good natural barrier, although there is lower ground, as you can see there. Uh, so maybe there's an advance towards the west in that direction. Um, if we, well, we'll come to that in a second, actually. Russian mill blogger claimed that Russian forces advanced to unspecified uh, positions on the earth skill. Sorry, said that Cherovati, the Ukrainian spokesperson, stated Russian forces are attempting to seize the battlefield initiative in this direction. And I think that's definitely true. So this is now where I'm going to show you. So this is Kupiansk up there. So you can see a red arrow. Uh, this is Andrew Perpetua's map. And you can see right from the north past Fatava, all the way down to Kremina and below Kremina in this kind of Belarivka area, there are Russian uh, pushes. There are attempts at uh, attacking. And that is a significant change from a couple of weeks ago. That really has, um, that really does show that the Russians are trying to give the Ukrainians something to think about in the 
whole area. Uh, as we come further to the south, the Ukrainians are attacking in places, the Russians are attacking places, all these usual names that we hear so much about, Dubrova, uh, we've, uh, we'll come to Karmazinov in a second, um, Torska, uh, Kremina, so on and so forth, all uh, featuring what we are going to uh, have a look at now is Karmazinovka. So as, as we come down here, down south, we come past Svatova and we come to see some Russian gains. So there's some interesting mapping differences here. So I was talking to you yesterday, oops, sorry, yesterday about the Russians getting over um, the Zheribets River at Kar Karmazinovka, which is, again, another natural barrier that comes down there. They've got across the river and took control of this forest. The so Ukrainians were in this forest and were trying to counterattack. Well, Andrew Perpetua now has quite a big Russian gain for this whole area, including that forest where the Ukrainians were at. So that's, that's a really big gain there. On the other hand, the red line here, as you can see, and this was from yesterday, Suryat maps had the Russians gaining down to the south there. Now, Andrew Perpetua doesn't have that, but has further gains to the north. It could be that you Russians control both of these areas, but neither mapper agrees on that, certainly at the moment. This seems to be an area where the Russians are having some quite some success. They are taking some decent territory there. Uh, the question is, you know, is that a huge worry for Ukrainians? Is that something they can just suck up and wait until the right moment to strike back? Are they, it, it is, did they see this as too much of a distraction to their main counter-offensives to worry about, or are they going to send considerable forces to try and stop the Russian advances there and in other places along the front line in the uh, Luhansk Oblast here? Uh, who knows? We shall see. So activity going on in a number of places all the way down here. That's the Tolska area, the Brova area, Bilohorivka. And we come down uh, to uh, Bakhmut. Again, not hearing anything about uh, Rozdalivka other than it being shelled by the Russians, which is, you know, nothing unusual there. Uh, we come to the Bakhmut section here in the ISW. Ukrainian forces continue counteroffensive operations in the northern and southern flanks of Bakhmut, uh, making limited gains. Geolocated footage published on July 21st shows the Ukrainians advancing along the E-40 highway uh, northeast of Orokovo and Vasilivka. Okay, let's go to that now. Uh, just to give you an idea of the uh, of the whole of the area, this is again Andrew Perpetua showing, do you know what, for, for every Ukrainian uh, attack and, and pr pressure point in the blue arrow, there is at least one red one. So the Russians are counter-attacking around Bakhmut as well. It is tough fighting, but I don't think the Russians are making the gains around Bakhmut that they might be elsewhere. So this geolocated footage that the ISW mentions is along this highway, and there's a video evidence of this on Telegram. That's what you're looking at here. I've just zoomed in massively just to give you an idea of both of these pictures together. Uh, so uh, the um, I won't show you the footage, but basically if we zoom into this area of the E40 highway coming down here, where we've seen over successive days, even Deep State Map now, the more current mapping in yellow uh, showing... Uh, no no gains here at the moment in, in this area, although there are some gains elsewhere. Uh, this area here is where they showed some gains yesterday, and we've had movement from all the mappers showing the, the Ukrainians are pushing down here. And in fact, that telegram footage suggests that the there's fighting here and that the Russians are pushed back to sort of this area. So there is gains, or there are gains as according to that source in this area, but that's not reflected yet in any of the mappers that I am using here. Uh, so yeah, there are limited gains for the Ukrainians in that northern area, and that puts pressure you know, down, it puts pressure on the Russian forces to the south of that, uh, that main supply route, and also helps to encircle the Zaleznyansky more. I haven't heard since there were rumours that Ukrainians had taken Zaleznyansky. I haven't heard anything about that since then. It's just not not turned up, so it's probably not true at all. Um, and then uh, we come down past Dubovo Vazilivka to Bakivka, where there's fierce fighting, and there are some gains. Actually, so towards Yehidne, Yehidne has been mentioned an, an awful lot, but actually there's some gains down here towards Rose Alley. And the... Uh, and Bakhmut city itself. There are talks about how fighting is ongoing in the city. That's, those rumours are now 
uh, surfacing more often. I don't know what part of the city, whether it's the southwest still um, or perhaps up here. So this is from Deep State Maps. Uh, so they that is a game that they are showing and that they were had the Russians sort of in this area there. And that's all been pushed back to this reservoir here um, and uh, and this forest area now being not under control. That's a gray zone now, not under control of the Russians. So the Russians have been pushed back there. Uh, if we carry on and with the ISW, um, the Ukrainian general staff reported that Ukrainian forces continued offensive operations north and south of Bakhmut, where Russian forces deployed reinforcements. So they are still reinforcing uh, the area. Uh, Cherovati, the Ukrainian spokesperson, has reported that Ukrainian forces continue to hold the initiative in Bakhmut direction, uh, where they are making steady progress. And the reported that Ukrainian forces are engaging in maneuver actions. So maneuver action, maneuver warfare is. Imagine you've got the enemy. This is how I understand it. Correct me if I'm wrong. Imagine you've got the enemy sort of strong contingent of enemy forces right ahead of you. It's like, right, let's go and attack them. So you kind of, you would attack the, I guess, the strongest part. That's not maneuver warfare. That's just like piling in and attacking force on force. Maneuver warfare is kind of moving around to try and find the weakest points uh, so that you don't just uh, trick your own forces down massively. You find a weak point and exploit that. Uh, and and you're sort of maneuvering around, right? So that is what the Ukrainians are doing is uh, trying trying to find the weak points, as we can see on the southern front line, uh, so that they can exploit them. A Russian mill blogger claimed that Ukrainian, uh, sorry, they're doing that to avoid heavy losses, so they're not smacking into the heaviest force concentrations of the Russians. A Russian mill blogger claimed that Ukrainian forces gained a foothold on the heights north of Orokovo Vasilivka, so that is the Russians themselves admitting that the Ukrainians have gained, uh, you know, some some positions around where we were talking about before. Um, so then we're really going to come on down past uh, Bakhmut city centre, uh, this central part to concentrate on Uh We'll go to some of these other sources first. So this one says that Klyshivka, Andreevka, Kodimivka, the Ukrainians... Um, actually, no, we'll go to this one first, sorry. Uh, the small evening update, uh, this is from so from last night, Ukrainians continue to press Russians in, in the salient northwest of Bakivka. After using cluster munitions, the Ukrainians are taking over Russian positions near Yehidne. So this is, again, we are hearing claims of cluster munitions being used uh, and Ukrainians making some gains in the places I've just mentioned. Uh, then uh, after saying that, says that in Klitschivka, Andreevka, Kodimivka, the Ukrainians, especially the 30th Mechanized, is making progress in these directions. Cluster munitions have been used. Again, uh, Russian positions have been taken over and prisoners and loot have been taken. Um, no report said last night Ukrainians are conducting offensive operations towards Klitschivka and Andreevka right now. Tomorrow there will probably be good news. And then another source saying the armed forces of Ukraine on southwestern outskirts of Bakhmut strengthen their positions. Ukrainian sources report the presence of the Ukrainian army in the village of, of Klitschivka. So there are various rumours that are actually in there like we talked about yesterday. At Klitschivka the enemy went on the defensive. Positional battles continue. North of Klitschivka the Ukrainians have had partial success. Uh, moving the U Russians out of the forest area and west and southwest the same, moving them out of the forest areas as well. But the U Russians are counterattacking. In the south, almost all the landings are under control of the Ukrainians. The battles continue in the direction of the village of Andrivka and uh, Kurdyumivka. So as we zoom in, let's let's make sense of all of those claims. We have Klitschivka there, which is sitting on the lower ground. The Ukrainians appear to now be in Klitschivka. And we have a good sense of that because there were claims by the Russians that uh, they have, or that the Russians had shelled Klitschivka. And in order for them to shell Klitschivka, that you would assume the Ukrainians are in Klitschivka. So there is that seeming to, to be the case. Uh, and then it's these forest areas showing uh, to the southwest uh, that are um, in the grey zone because, you know, it's going to be more difficult to clear the Russians fully out of those. Uh, and they'll have trench lines within the forests too uh, but the U Ukrainians are having continued success in this general area that is the uh, quote and yeah Michael McKay here saying that yeah mentioning Klitschivka as a shelling a Russian shelling target means that Ukrainian forces are in the settlement 
So that is essentially what's going on in Bakhmut. There are lots of other claims that the Ukrainian forces are attacking, that Russian forces are attacking in all these areas. But you can imagine, you get the idea. It is going to be tough fighting, but this is one of the areas, I think, Bakhmut, particularly south of Bakhmut, where the Ukrainians have do indeed have the initiative and they are making it count and making some gains. Uh, so as we move to the south from Bakhmut, we come to Avdivka, and not again, not much to mention other than there is fighting all, all over Avdivka. It's not that there's nothing going on, but there's no uh, sort of gains there. Uh, as, as you can see here, you know, Vodjani, Marinka to the south, Vaseli to the north, uh, all these kind of places mentioned. Uh, Krasnoharivka to the north, uh, both the Russians and the Ukrainians attacking each other in, in many of these places. Uh, it does say this, I pointed this part out, it says Russian mill bloggers claim that Russian forces attacked Ukrainian positions near Marinka, Krasnoharivka and Nivelsky. So this is the uh, Krasnoharivka down here, because, you know, there's nothing like having a Krasnoharivka just north of Avdivka and a Krasnoharivka just south of Avdivka, you know, because why not? Um, but the Marienka, Krasnoharivka and Novelsky, these three places, that's a tiny little uh, almost agricultural outpost south of Pervomysky that they have been fighting over for an awful long time. And then towards Krasnoharivka where the Russians attacked that mine and then Marienka as well. So the, the claim here is that all of these places are being attacked. So they're attacking, the, the Russians are attacking them. Barabash has reported that Russian forces are continuing attempts to encircle Avdivka and have been deploying reinforcements to the area, including unspecified naval infantry elements, so Marines who were pro previously in Nikolska and Ma near Mariupol. So I was wondering whether they're starting, the Russians are starting to think, OK, things are fairly static along this front line. We have troops in reserve, some troops, maybe not a lot, that's Nikolska, that we were maybe keeping there to put into positions uh, that were under a lot of pressure from the Ukrainians along this front line, but actually that's fairly stable. So perhaps we can then support some of these other uh, Russian offensive areas with, with other troops like those Marines. I don't know, that's just me adding two and two, and it may be seven, but it may be four. Uh, so yeah, activity in the Abdivka area, but not all that much really to uh, concentrate on. Um, I, yep, I don't, there's just this other than, uh, yeah, north of uh, Abdivka between Bakhmut and Abdivka, New York was hit with FAB 500. This is New York there, uh, got um, Bakhmut, then you've got Toretsk, New York, that was hit. So the Russians are still continuing to hit. I mean, that's nothing unusual, but it's just they're using FAB 500s, obviously hitting some kind of uh, meaningful target you would you would hope rather than just obliterating the civilians there I mean that's not past the Russians to do that though uh, so as we come further to the south past all, all those places we've been talking about past Nova Merkalivka where there's activity we come to Vukhladar and Mikilska uh, and we'll go back to the ISW uh, that says Russian forces sources claim that Ukrainian forces conducted offensive operations in western Donetsk Oblast, but did not advance. Russian mill bloggers claim the elements of the 155th Naval Infantry Brigade. These are the people that were hammered near Vukhudar previously a couple, of, a couple of times and have been reconstituted three or four times. They've repelled Ukrainian assaults with armoured vehicles north of Mikilska. I presume that's the Ukrainian assaults have armoured vehicles. So that's to say that Ukrainians are doing uh, something around here. We've heard previously that they've been quite active around Volodymyrivka. Uh, quite active around this to the south of Pavlivka and also uh, further to the north around Solodka as well, uh, just there. So the Ukrainians are still probing in a number of places. I've been wondering whether they're going to try and do a cheeky so attempt to come around uh, here and get behind all the Russian defences and maybe uh, overcome that that kind of stasis that, that some people are saying is, is taking place. Um, we shall see. Right, so moving to the west to this area, Staromilska. There's some tiny, uh, well, a small amount of gain shown on Andrew Perpetua's mapping. This has moved from uh, being Russian control, solid Russian control, to being grey area. That's the northern Staromilska that we've uh, heard about that they've been fighting over for a few days now. Um, bit of a difference between Syria maps there and uh, Andrew Perpetua. But yeah, some, some gains there. Uh, 
there is fighting, fierce fighting north of Priyutne. Uh, the Russians regain this area. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, and I think there is a case of the Ukrainians attacking and the Russians attacking in, in a lot of these places. Ukrainian ERSW says Ukrainian forces continue counteroffensive operations along the administrative border. Uh, that is here. So this is Zaporizhia to the left and uh, Donetsk to the right of this border coming down there. So Priyutne basically, but this whole Velikanova Silka axis um, sector, sorry. So Velikanova Silka just up there. You've got the river coming down here and all these uh, settlements where the Ukrainians have really been halted over the last week. So geolocated footage published on July 21st indicates Ukrainian forces advanced closer to Priyutne. So this is some footage here of Russians shelling Ukrainian forces, which means, uh, you know, Ukrainian forces are here and they control that area or the assumption is it's either controlled or it's in the gray zone but you've got ukrainian forces there so where are these forces let's have a look uh first a lot of ukrainians being shelled north of priyutne that's where we'd expect them to be so yeah it doesn't really tell us too much this second one is much much uh i think more revealing so the ukrainians are here um and that is right on the Russian defensive line, as according to Syriac maps. Uh, I would assume then that that means that Syriac maps is not correct there and that, that Andrew Perpetua would be more likely correct. And it does show, as ISW claims, some limited uh, advances for the Ukrainians. So if the Ukrainians are there then and they're being hit by artillery. It means that the Russian forces aren't there because they're not. Well, you would assume they're not going to be hammering their own troops with uh, artillery. Um, although, again, that's uh, not beyond them. It has happened before. Right. Uh, so th that is really all I have. There's just not much information today, yesterday and the day before. Getting information out of this area is really difficult. Uh, and I don't know if that means that it's just really tight operational security or there's just not a lot taking place. As in, there is a lot taking place, of course. There's just not a lot of mapping movement. Uh, but again, you know, don't think that it's all about moving on the map here. As I said earlier, Andrew Perpetua said, and on his map, he's got lots of little uh, pins for Russian equipment that's been destroyed. They are they are losing a lot, especially as they're doing a lot of counterattacks. Each counterattack, they're losing, you know, bits of equipment. So on the one hand, you might think, oh, this is not great for Ukraine. There's been no real movement. But in order that there is no movement, the Russians have to be working really, really hard. And if they're working hard and pushing these counterattacks and they've got low morale troops, so there are apparently very little ammunition. There's some rumors coming out yesterday of like, and this is significant. I mean, if this is true, there were claims that the Russians are throwing everything they've got at this. Literally, you know, there was one claim that soldiers with just two rounds in their pockets sent sent forward, you know, everything. Now, of course, you know, pinch of salt and all that. But I, I wonder whether there is an element of this where the Russians are like, just everything, let's send, send everything at this and make sure the Rus the Ukrainians are finding it really difficult to make advances and people get fed up and you know, not su support will be less forth forthcoming and so on and so forth. But if you do that, yeah, you have some success and, and people think, oh, this counteroffensive event, great. And then at some point, you've just expended all your energy and all of your uh, the goodwill of your troops and uh, the, what's left of their morale and you've expended the ammunition and, and literally the personnel and equipment. And, and, and then that is when the Ukrainians can go, right, We'll, we'll take it from here, hold my beer type thing. So that would be the hope that that, that is what's going on. And, you know, that interview with Artie Green seems to indicate that that is what the Ukrainians are doing. They are they are t degrading the Russian forces significantly uh, before taking that further. Because, yep, that is exactly what they did with the Kherson. And people said about Kherson that that was um, really expensive for the Ukrainians in terms of their own losses and yeah it wasn't ideal they did lose a lot of equipment but that's you know that's what you do when you go on an offense you can't again it's like pie in the sky to think that you you can take the whole of Kherson back and not lose any equipment so what they had to do here was take a spend a long time taking out key you know bits of equipment and then and then we got to a point where the Russians are like right our logistics have been hammered 
our guys are running out of stuff. Uh, we just got to pull pull back. We can't just hold on. And that, although there was a river involved in that, which made things a little bit different, you can see that that's basically what the Ukrainians are trying to do here, which is handle the logistics, take out some massive depots, hammer bridge, um, take out bridges to the north of Crimea, uh, hammer, 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 and then eventually you could you can get through. And there were lots of minefields as well in Kherson, just not as many as there are now. But you know, it, there is definitely a hallmark, a lot of hallmarks of the Kherson. Um, counteroffensive in what is taking place here. Uh, slight gains for the Ukrainians on Andrew Perpetua's map, or it could just be rejigging of the map. Literally, just you know, a few bits of field there to the northeast of Robotna. Uh, here we have OSINT defenders saying Russian sources are reporting tonight, last night, that after a large artillery barrage, Ukrainian armor and mechanized elements, equipment, NATO equipment have launched a major assault in the Russian defensive lines in the Zaporizhia region between Robotna and Vobova, which is manned by forces of the 291st and 70th motorized rifle regiments, respectively. So that. That is in the, that's there's for Bovi, there's for Robotna. So in this area, there could be some large attacks having taken place yesterday and last night. We know that they do a lot of their attacking in the evening uh, tonight. Um, so they they do have that advantage with operating at night. And then another source saying Russian sources at 4 a.m. The Ukrainian army with NATO armored vehicles again advanced near Orokiv. So this is the area we're talking about, trying to break through the Zaporizhia front. The command of the armed forces of Ukraine, after active artillery preparation again at 4 a.m., sent new waves of infantry and armored personnel carriers on NATO infantry fighting vehicles to attack Russian positions. Uh, so it's pretty much the same claims as before. Assault groups from the Ukrainian armed forces of Ukraine are trying to break through the Russian trenches. Uh, and enemy MLRS encounter advancing Ukrainian units with fire. So that's the MLRS uh, hitting the Ukrainians there. Let's hope the source is reliable and that the Ukrainian army will be able to break through the enemy line. So that is towards Robova and towards uh, uh, Ro Robotna. We'll see whether any of that actually pans out, what the effect is. Um, so going to the ISW... Uh, going back to Velika Novosilka, because I did sort of go on, didn't I? Uh, geolocated footage published uh, on the 21st indicates that Ukrainian forces advanced closer to Putin. Now I showed you that, uh, and that Ukrainian forces achieved success in Novodarivka Putin. So direction, so they are achieving success near Putin. And then moving to where we are now, Russian mill blogger claimed that. So on the 20th, Russian forces counterattacked near, oh no, this is Putin again, and pushed Ukrainian forces out of the positions north of that settlement. But that geolocated footage suggests that that is not true, okay? Or at least it has been reversed. So the importance of that geolocated footage I showed you previously, or at least the pins on the map, shows that the, the Ukrainians haven't been pushed back as the Russians had claimed. Right, now back to where we are about around Robotna. Russian sources amplified footage on the 21st. Now, I could show you, the, well, I can't show you because there, there are dead bodies, but the footage they're talking about is on Telegram and actually it doesn't show you anything. There's no geolocated evidence within that, but they are amplifying that footage purporting to show elements of the Russian 291st Guards uh, recapturing positions following successful counterattacks near Robotna. As ISW says here, it's not observed visual confirmation of though any Russian advances around this area but there is t tough fighting we you know we heard previously that the ukrainians had taken control over the main russian trench lines there don't know if that's still the case it looks like they might be pushed back out of them with fierce counter attacks from the russians um we'll we'll wait and see uh so that that's what's uh, taking place in the uh in that sector the robotna sector uh, basically uh, a lot of uh, a lot of fighting, as you can imagine. Right, we'll come out and look at Kherson. So that is Robotna. Uh, well, I say look at Kherson. We if we move to the west uh, of this Orokiv down to uh, Melitopol, Tokmak and Melitopol direction in the Vazilivka direction. Again, you know, not a lot of information coming out for Zerubianki, Pietikhetki, and Kamienska as well. Uh, fighting will continue there. Uh, but I've not heard anything in the last 24 hours that, that gives you much indication of movement there. And then we come to Kherson and uh, to Antonisky Bridge here. 
Uh, Holoprostan gets a mention today, so we'll go to the RCW. It says, Russian sources claim that Ukrainians have maintained a presence on the uh, left bank of the Dnipro and fighting continues the Antonovsky Bridge. A Russian mill blogger claimed that fighting is ongoing near Ukrainian positions close to the bridge and that Russian forces repelled a small Ukrainian group that attempted to land near Holoprostan. Uh, the Russians are claiming that small groups, Ukrainian groups, continue attempts to land on the left bank. So nothing to, to say in terms of changing of territory around that area. It's been the same for like the best part of a week now. Um, and that the Ukrainians are still trying to have, you know, these small sabotage or reconnaissance in force or whatever they are, attacks in certain places here. One is, is recorded around Holopristan. But uh, there, there's lots of activity that goes on up and down here. I saw some uh, uh, drone footage of Ukrainians hitting Russians around, not Novokokovka, it's another bridge up here uh, where, oh no, 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 not a bridge, there is no other bridge. Where was it? Uh, it might be around the Novokokovka, around there. There was uh, some drone footage of Russians digging trenches right along the banks, uh, right near the banks, and they were hammered by a couple of first-person view drones. So there's just there is activity going on all up and down uh, the uh, Dnipro, uh, and that's that. So yeah, another fairly quiet day in some respects, but it, it was not quite. There's a lot of activity. Uh, again, it's a case of Luhansk being all about Russian pressure. Bakhmut being mainly about Ukrainian pressure and the South being about the challenges Ukraine have in, in taking territory. But at the same time, they are still, and you must remember this, they're still attriting the Russian uh, equipment quite quite successfully in that area. So, you know, it, it is it is a mixed bag um, uh, of, of what's going on. Anyway, uh, thank you very much. Please like, subscribe and share. Take care and I'll speak to you later.